How are we doing today, guys? Uh, Keith Rooney here, and we are here to talk about debate four. Should states surrender or not surrender their sovereignty and comply to humanitarian international law? Me, I will be defending the side of states should not surrender sovereignty and comply with humanitarian international law. Well, just before we get started, I want to give a basis of what everything is. So the best definition I found for me and for everyone else uh, should be the sovereignty is the authority of a state to govern itself or another state, which is the supreme power or authority. And then looking on the other side, human, the humanitarian law, also known as the law of war or the law of armed conflict, is uh, generally defined as a set of rules which seek for humanitarian reasons to limit the effects of armed conflict. So just to give a rundown, the main three conflicts that I want to talk about today is one, the whole COVID pandemic, uh, two, what happened in Melbourne, Australia, and three, uh, what is currently going on in the Russian and the Ukraine war. So let's get right into it. So when it comes to the COVID pandemic, as we saw in the United States, uh, every state had its own set of restrictions. There were certain federal restrictions when you look at like airplanes and any federal buildings. No matter, even to today, you still have to wear a mask on an airplane. Federal always will go over a state. But each state has its own set of mandates. That's why California is still in lockdown in different parts. Uh, Texas and Florida are fully open. And then there's other states. Like, uh, personally, for me, I, I experienced it all in Pennsylvania. Whereas, like, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh were closed. But the rest of the uh, rest of the state was open just because of the vast majority of population. But when we look at this, uh, people, it's really divided a lot of people. Uh, some people, you have the masked people, the unmasked people, the vaxxed people, the unvaxxed people. People were really torn on what to do and what was going on. Uh, and it really did come down to the rights. Like, do we have to get vaccinated to work? Uh, do we have to wear a mask to work? Uh, what jobs are really uh, there? Which ones are very uh, important to today's work? As we saw, nurses, doctors. Anyone that was working during the height of the pandemic, you are a worker that will always have a job. And I saw that firsthand because my mom is a nurse. So she was forced to get the vaccination. It was against, to me, I think against your event, your First Amendment rights. But we'll get, that to, we'll get to that another day. But this uh, pandemic really showed that uh, some people were not willing to follow humanitarian international law because we were not trying to do what was right for all the greater good and armed conflict. We were trying to do what was best for us, which in my eyes is what you should do. You shouldn't have to give up any part of your rights uh, just for one greater good, because you never know what that greater good exactly is. So moving on, uh, next I wanted to talk about, first of all, the Second Amendment, which is the right to bear arms, and bring that up in connection to Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne, Australia recently, recently gave up their right to bear arms, and they basically gave up their state right. So now they're controlled by one one republic, and this is what happened during the during the pandemic. They saw some very big complications with this. Some people were not even willing, not even allowed to go outside without a cop stopping them and telling them and putting them back in their homes. To me, this is cruel and unusual as a pun as a punishment, which is under the Eighth Amendment of our Act, not in Australia. But there are people don't understand when you give up your rights, you are giving up everything and you are listening to one body of government. Look at North Korea. Look at China. They decide everything. It's their way or the highway. People don't understand how we have it in the United States. In the United States, every state has their own entity. If we would, if each state were to give up their own rights, we we be just like them. China, North Korea, the United States would be one whole. States wouldn't even exist. Pennsylvania, California, Arizona, bye. There's no reason for it. Then people don't understand this. Each state has their own Congress, has their own Parliament. For us, it's the best thing you can do. You elect your own people, and people would re- re- people really don't understand either. Is that it's not the states' rights. It's our rights. It's our people's rights because we elect the people who make the official laws for us. Which brings me to my final example. I want to look at the Russian-Ukraine rule uh, war going on. If you look at the basic definition of human humanitarian international law, it's a set of rules to seek 
for humanitarian reasons to limit the effects of armed conflict. If this was true and people wanted to follow this, Ukraine would have laid down by now. They would have gave in to Russia's commands and would have laid down for the greater good of their people. But no, they don't want to give up their country. They don't want to give up their stance. They want to fight and retain what is rightfully theirs. And th- that, in turn, is their state not giving up their sovereignty. They do not want to give up their supreme power of their own country, which Russia wants to take. If they were to just lay down, they would lose all their power. They would have to go under Russian, Russian government, Russian ruling, and would have to listen to them. Basically, Russia would just expand their republic. But yeah, I, I truly believe that us as states, whether it be our states in the United States or just states slash countries such as Nicaragua, Chile, like all of them, Haiti, never give up your supreme power or authority of your own states, which us, the people, have control of. Because if we do that, then you we're leading down the path of dictatorships and overall complete power. Like the old Joseph Stalin, Adolf Hitler, right now uh, Kim Jong Un. We don't want you don't want someone controlling all. So United States for us, we never want the president to be the one making all the decisions. We want each state to have their own say, and each person, all, all of us have our say in what goes. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions for me, please type down in the chat below. But I hope to do a great rebuttal video for anyone else. Thank you.